I do have something that I've seen in the 49er racing, which I think is of interest. Going to make a really short video about it. Um, sorry there's not more content, just been really busy at work. That's life. Pete Burling, Blair Took, America's Cup winners, um, have lost their Olympic title in the 49er class to GBR. Uh, just how did that happen? Many of you watched the medal race and seen how GBR snuck ahead of Germany on the final downwind of the medal race. Equal points with New Zealand, but won on the fact that they won the medal race. Very tight series. So what was the difference between these boats? Have um, uh, Pete and Blair lost their touch? What was the sticking points in the regatta for them? Done some deep diving into the results. And I think one of the things that st stuck out for me and, well, basically always sticks out for me when I watch um, the New Zealand boys race is how good they are at moving through the fleet when they have a bad result. Uh, that's true of all their world championship wins in the 49er class. They've been, you know, up there at Winwood Marks, but if they do have a bad race, they will, you know, happily pull up, pull up through 20, 30 boats. And that's no different at this regatta. So if we look at how many boats each each team overtook during the regatta new zealand between the first mark of the race and the finish overtook a remarkable 36 boats and they did this consistently over each race so it wasn't like one race they overtook a load and the next race they didn't you know most races were overtaking two three four five six boats um, there was only one race where they slipped back a position and um, which race was that? Let me have a look. Race seven, they were second the win mark, slipped back to third. But that's remarkable consistency at just plugging away, overtaking boats. However, what I think happened to them in this regatta is their rounding position, the win mark generally was just giving them too much to do. Their average women mark rounding position was um, 8.2, 8 um, which is actually the seventh best in the 49er fleet. So yes, incredible work as always moving through the fleet, but they just weren't firing on those first legs, giving them too much to do. And I know it's kind of, if you watch much 49er racing, that is kind of Pete and Blair style to have conservative starts and work the way through. Um, but maybe at this Tokyo regatta, they just got found out a little bit more. On the other hand, GBR were averaging almost a position better at the Winwood Marks and um, themselves actually also overtaking a decent amount of boats during the regatta. I think they, um, they gained 15 places um, over the races, which is not too shabby at all. Um, but yeah, I think quite interesting, the difference in the styles. It's also worth noting that GBR actually the bulk of the boats they overtook were in kind of like two or three races where they really rolled the dice and made some big gains. The race that specifically um, stands out to me is um, race six of the 49ers. Yeah, the medal race was super tense and obviously they win it on the line overtaking Germany incredible race but in my opinion it was probably race six and their lured mark rounding which probably won them this olympic regatta so yeah this is the uh, lured mark race six where gbr made incredible gains through the race on the first downwind and especially the um second beat quite interesting to look at on the tracker because they take quite a unconventional approach to this which really pays off and i think the tracker illustrates this really well so something that's not really being shown anywhere else or discussed anywhere else so hopefully this is interesting for you so yeah gbr found themselves well down the fleet you can see on the tracker this big shift in the start goes from about 182 to 189 990 so a decent right shift in the start gbr with the left end of the start didn't get a good start there anyway unfavored end did a couple of attacks on the first beat generally bad first beat rounded the wound mark in 14th coming into this lured mark and you'll see i've got gbr highlighted and they're in a real kind of big pack of boats coming into this lured mark 
you can see from the two boys this left hand mark is actually favored it's a decent way upwind gbr maybe it was luck maybe they knew something else but they found themselves a really nice lane to the left hand side of the course now normally um, you only go to the unfavored mark if you know you've got a lot of boats going around the favored one and you can see here if i um, zoom in a decent amount you've got a load of boats going around this mark gbr goes to this one and the problem of going to the favored mark not only the congestion during the rounding but also if that's actually the way you want to go on the course then and you're not the first boat out of the mark then you're basically sat right on someone else's um, right on someone else's transom in their dirty air so often if you're mid fleet sounds counterintuitive but if you want to get a clear lane to the other side of the course you can't go to the favor mark doing what gbr do can actually pay off and there's a few reasons why so they come into this lure mark. I'm not sure if that was a jibe drop or jibe then drop, but they go straight into attack. And normally, that is a big no no for several reasons. First of all, a jibe drop is a reasonably slow mark grounding. The tack after the mark grounding again slows you down. And then you're sailing back through this area between the two marks, which is, you know, A, can have boats still coming downwind into or um, it's just got a load of disturbed air however this is the olympics the fleets aren't so big they're also towards the back of the fleet anyway so they know that tacking back across this mark zone maybe isn't as bad as it would be in a qualifying race at a world championships for instance so they tack back across and you'll see what this does is it actually gives them a really nice lane if i zoom out See the boats that are, went to this favoured mark, all of them either had to tack out early or like, um, like New Zealand, I sat in the dirty air of boats ahead. You see GBR quite a way back, but they've got this really loads of clear air coming down the course in the middle for them. And as you go up this beat, they really gauge up on the hip of the boats above. Then there's about another kind of I don't know, five degree shift. It's not huge, but it shifts back left coming into the windward mark. But um, for a boat that rounded mid fleet at the leeward mark, done an amazing job and pulling off a maneuver, jibe drop, tack, not that easy of maneuver, but also a low percentage maneuver. But he spotted the perfect opportunity to make that call. And um, as he come up to the windward mark, the breeze continues you can see continues going uh, going left they just sneak into this uh windward mark below a few boats that have gone over the ley line into fourth place brazil were uh, um disqualified for their harness weight um and then they overtake germany with a nice simo jibe down the last run so going from 14th in that race to second incredible result from them I hope you found that interesting. Um, I certainly found the differences between their first mark positions quite interesting. It's kind of what I thought watching the racing. Um, also Germany, incredible consistency, way better than everyone else the first mark, but always losing a few positions. So um, yeah, difficult there. Maybe that was playing into GBR's mind as well in that medal race when they saw Germany ahead of them, knowing that Germany start races strongly, but often can be susceptible to dropping back the brit boys did um did overtake them race six as well um on the last run so maybe they really fancy their chances against germany on that last downwind and elected to go and attack the germans for the medal race win rather than trying to push um pete and blair back so interesting call there short video but hopefully it's uh, showing you something that you um wouldn't have seen elsewhere